Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q-Blast. I am Dr. Jason Farnasiak, and we are here with this week's clinical vignette. As always, we are going to review the vignette, the high-yield take-home points, which will get you additional points on your boards and also help you take care of patients on the wards. We're going to jump right in here today. An obese 72-year-old woman collapses and is brought to the emergency department. She flew from California to New York three days earlier. She has smoked a pack of cigarettes daily for 50 years, and during the physical examination is unable to respond to questions or follow instructions. Three days later, she becomes hypotensive and dies. Autopsy shows multiple loosely adherent clots within the distal branching arteries of the left middle cerebral artery and in the vertebrobasilar system. Which of the following pathologic conditions would most likely account for the neurologic findings in this patient? Is it A, atherosclerosis of penetrating cerebral arteries, B, endocarditis of the tricuspid valve, C, patent foramen ovale, D, pulmonary thromboembolism, E, Trousseau syndrome? The answer here is C, patent foramen ovale. A pain foramen of valley is actually found in a number of healthy subjects. The key here is that it allows a deep venous thrombosis, or DVT, to bypass the pulmonary circulation and thereby produces what is called a paradoxical embolism, which goes to the brain and other organs. Intraarterial or intraventricular defects can have the same effect. None of the other answer choices would explain the development of embolic infarcts in the cerebral parenchyma, and that's what's key here, this paradoxical embolism. Thrombus formation is associated with Virchow's triad, and that is hypercoagula hypercoagulability, stasis, and endothelial damage. Our patient has risk factors for all of these. This is an important diagram here and to review. I would take some time to review it carefully, there are three areas which show the bypass or shunts from the neonatal system. The first you can see is the ductus venosus, which goes through the liver. The second is the foramen ovale, which is a right to left shunt in the atria. And then the third is the ductus arteriosus. Here, of course, we are dealing with a patent foramen ovale, which is labeled two in the diagram. And that allows deep venous thrombosis to go from the peripheral veins in the legs through to the other side of the heart and then out to the brain, causing these paradoxic emboli. High yield takeaway points include persistence of the patent foramen ovale is found in a number of healthy subjects, so you don't always know that you have it. A widely patent foramen ovale may allow emboli, which originate in the leg veins, to reach the systemic arteries, something called a paradoxic embolism. This can produce infarcts in the brain and other organs where DVTs don't typically go. These are our high yield take home points for paradoxic embolism. This is gonna be an important concept when you're looking at these types of questions on the boards as well as on the wards. I hope you've learned something today that you can take with you. I'm Dr. Jason Fernasiak and we'll be back again with another high yield clinical vignette.